All right. Well, it's exciting. So I, I think we'll get started. Hopefully everybody online can hear me. Thank you for taking the time to join us on behalf of the members of the Board of Education. I'd just like to thank everyone for taking the time to join us this evening to review the details of a proposed capital project that the district is looking to engage in. Uh, before we begin, just as a reminder to our audience that this presentation is being recorded and we will post the copy of the recording on the district's webpage for future viewings. Anyone that's joining us virtually, if you can just double check to make sure that your microphone is muted as we go through the presentation, that would be appreciated. As we begin, a uh, large capital project for a school district can be a very exciting topic. Um, personally, as we go through this presentation, I think you'll see the excitement in my voice about this potential opportunity that we've really been discussing for as long as I've been in Hartford, so about 15 years. So over the past two, three years, the district's been working with our architectural firm, CS Arch and Associates, on developing a potential scope of work for our large-scale capital project. Last month, the Board of Education approved a resolution that calls for a public vote to be held on Tuesday, May 17th, which is also the day of our annual school budget vote. The vote itself is seeking authorization for the district to engage in construction, renovation, alterations, and additions to the building, not to exceed $8,860,000. The presentation this evening is to review the scope of work and the financial information associated with the proposed project. It is important to note, though, that this evening is not going to be the only time that information on this project is provided to the community. We are in the process of finalizing a newsletter that's specific to this project that we will mail home to all community residents, and I myself will make myself available to anybody who has any questions, and we will continue to update our website and social media postings as we continue throughout the process. Before we discuss the details of the proposed project, I think it's important to review the reasons why a school district would engage in capital projects. Really, there's two reasons. The first reason is straightforward, to maintain and improve district-owned facilities and the overall educational experience of our students. The second reason may seem like a strange statement, but by engaging in capital projects, school districts, if they're done properly, can help maintain a level tax levy for the community moving forward into the future. So I understand that statement may seem a miss, so I just want to take a couple minutes to explain that process. So other than employee salary benefits, one of the largest expenditures in the school district's annual budget is debt service. The debt service line includes all the financial borrowing that's associated with transportation and construction costs. To put this figure in perspective, the debt service line item for Hartford's current school budget is approximately 15% of our overall spend. As a district, we work with our financial consultants to identify strategies that will allow us to control the debt service payments on a year-to-year -year basis. These strategies then help us avoid large increases in expenditures that could then negatively impact the community. One of the strategies that we implement is forecasting future debt service payments. This process allows us to engage in long-term fiscal planning to try and manage our debt through sound fiscal strategies, including, when appropriate, refinancing debt and looking to offset any debt payments with reimbursable aid categories. The members of the Board of Education respect the community's investment in the district, and we strive to make sound financial decisions in order to maintain a solid financial standing to avoid roller coasters of large increases and small decreases on a year-to-year -year basis. The timing of these financial decisions plays an integral role in this process. When we forecast into the future to potentially borrow and engage in projects, we want to make sure that the borrowing time frame lines up with the expiration of old debt. If we do not follow a strict timeline, all the fiscal planning and efforts that we've done to maintain expenses can be thrown out the window and the district can find itself in a very difficult financial situation. So moving from the theoretical to the actual, this next slide represents the district's existing debt service payments that are related to construction costs. As you can see, the district's local share of what the district has to contribute on a yearly basis is consistent from 2022 through the year 2024, and it 
has been at this level for a number of years previously. However, when we project out to 2025 and beyond, there's a significant drop. In 2025, the costs associated with the district's $15 million building project that was approved in December of 2006 and completed in 2009 are set to come off the books or expire. The result in a significant reduction in the yearly debt service payments. While an initial and short-term financial view of this reduction may appear positive, by not replacing this debt, the district is actually setting itself up for a substantial debt service spike in the future, as well as a significant reduction in the corresponding building aid. Our financial calculations project that an $8 million capital project would offset the drop in debt and the corresponding building aid would keep the cost flat. This means that although there is new debt, the new debt replaces the old debt and the district's tax levy is not negatively impacted. In other words, by engaging in a new capital project, we can align the new debt to coincide with the expiration of the existing debt and keep the budget, both the expenditure side and the revenue side, level for years to come. In this chart, the blue columns are the existing debt service payment that was shown on the previous slide. Again, showing a significant drop off from 2024 to 2025. The orange columns represent the projected debt finances for the proposed capital project. As you can see, the new debt or the orange columns do exceed the current debt ceiling, which is represented by that tax neutral black line. The reason for the increase is that the projected scope of work is just beyond that $8 million figure that I previously discussed. In order for the district to complete the desired work, we would need to borrow more than just $8 million, which would increase our debt service payments. When we project the impact of the increased borrowing, or the section of the orange column above that black line, the impact would have an average marginal increase of $0.12 cents for $1,000 of total value, which I'll get into in just a minute. However, just as important, this also ensures that our building aid payments remain intact and that we have a balance of offsetting the debt service payments. This table outlines the potential impact to the tax base for the increase in borrowing. It's important to note that this sample would be in a situation where the district is unable to reduce other costs within the budget to account for the increase in debt service, and there is no significant change in the tax base. Between now and 2025, the district may be able to reduce expenditures in other areas, which would then reduce or potentially eliminate this increase. Or there may be new construction within the district boundaries that brings in new tax revenues that then offsets this increase as well. For the sake of argument though, let's assume that all spending remains proportionally the same and there is no new construction. In that scenario, if the project is approved, a person with $150,000 full home value would see a tax increase of $14 per year or a total increase of approximately $224 for the life of the borrowing, which is 16 years. A $200,000 assessment will see a $20 per year increase in taxes or a total increase of $320 over 16 years. So then this leads to the question, you know, what do we get for the potential increase in taxes? So before we discuss the specific scope of the work, I think it's important to recognize that the, pro the projected plan was not determined in a vacuum. The initial construction discussion were based on items that were contained in the needs assessment report completed as part of the $15 million project in 2009, and then revisited during the most recent $3.9 million project. The district also offered a community survey in the spring of 2021 to weigh in on the current structure and status of our facilities. The results of this survey then provided valuable insight to the members of the Board of Education as we move forward with the plan. Beyond these comments, the Board of Education also considered the recommendations from our faculty and staff. They engaged in long-term planning and district advancement discussions. They discussed the district's involvement in the community 
and how any modifications to the existing structure might benefit those within the community who do not have a student in school. And they reviewed the results of our latest building and condition survey. The results from all these sources provided the district with two main objectives. Developing a dedicated space for our performing arts department and to renovate the cafeteria. These two items have served as a starting point for our discussions. Although these items were the starting point, and while we would love to just be able to do whatever we wanted to do, New York State has very strict rules on capital projects, specifically in regards to auditoriums and building aid. Unfortunately, building a brand new auditorium is not what would be considered an aidable expense. Due to this, if the district wanted to build a new auditorium, we would not receive any aid on the project, and all the costs of the project would have to be borne locally, which without a significant endowment to the district is really not a realistic option. However, the Board of Education feels strongly about this item and would like to move forward with some sort of dedicated performing space. But as a result, we had to be very creative with our architects and develop a plan that would allow for the district to receive our aid while still accomplishing our goals. The good news is, we were able to determine that we could. Our scope of design now becomes a domino effect in which we touch a number of different areas in the building to accomplish our goal. So the proposed scope of work includes removing the stage from the cafeteria and then renovating and modernizing the cafeteria itself. We would then relocate the stage to the existing music classrooms, the courtyard, and a small section of the library would then be transformed into an auditorium slash multi-purpose room. The girls' locker room would then be renovated into a music classroom. And as a result of this, we would then need to build a new girls' locker room, and we would seek to build a second music classroom and replace the original gym flooring in the gymnasium. Very ambitious project. The map on this slide displays the existing building's first floor. Due to the construction restrictions within the State Education Department, it's within this footprint that we have to be creative within our approach. As I mentioned, this project would be a domino effect, where we address one item, which then impacts another item, and the first domino that I want to address is the cafetorianesium. This slide is the completed conceptual floor plan post-construction. The first domino to fall is the cafeteria. We're looking to make that space a more welcoming and friendly environment for our students. By removing the stage, we gain an additional 1,000 square feet for our students to eat and spread out. And the renovated area would be more conducive for our after school and weekend athletic practices and activities, including use for the Youth Commission and other programs. Once we remove the stage, we would need to relocate it. A new stage would be built where the existing choral and instrumental classrooms are located. The stage, though, is no good without a space for an audience. So we would look to construct a multi-purpose room auditorium in the space that is currently the courtyard and a small section of the library. The size of the stage would mirror the size of the current stage we already have. The multi-purpose room would have auditorium-style seating that would be automated and be able to pull, be pulled in and out based on the functionality of the room. In total, we are projecting that we would have upwards of 270 auditorium style seats and there would be room in front of the stage for fold up chairs if necessary. This space would now become an auditorium for our musical performances, assemblies, and meetings, but could also be used as a multi-purpose room when the seating system is pulled back. We view this space it is a wonderful opportunity to have a dedicated space for our arts department within the school, but also a space that the community could use for various activities. This would be a space for the community band to potentially rehearse and hold concerts, and could be used as a large meeting space if required. With the stage now occupying the chorus and band rooms, we need to reestablish those classrooms. Using the existing girls' locker room and some new construction, we would create two new classrooms for band and chorus. These classrooms would be significantly larger than the current rooms and would be better suited for the needs of the program. 
Again, with the domino effect, since we'd be taking away the girls' locker room, we would need to replace that space. We would plan to build a new locker room, including coaches' offices, on the exterior of the gym. And then lastly, we'd be looking to replace the original gym floor. The next few slides are basic artist renderings of what the renovations could look like, both internally and from the exterior of the buildings. Now, it's important to note that these are initial renderings, not what the final design might look like, but they do give us a glimpse into the possibility. So the first screen, or the first slide that's up there, is a rendering of the cafeteria. Again, you can see that the stage is removed, and we have significantly upgraded that space, including new lighting. There will be a retractable screen in the ceiling, and we've added a graphic wall on the back for visual interest. We envision that this space would be much more welcoming and enjoyable for our students, both during the lunch period and for after-school events. We would maintain the multi-use flexibility for this space, including athletic practices, meetings, and other events, while creating a more appealing place for our students to eat. The next conceptual rendering is what the interior of the multi-purpose room may look like. As you can see, we have a stage, an auditorium style seating. We would also include performance lighting and sound. And this space would be a critical element to our performing arts programs and could be utilized for large meetings, professional development opportunities, and a variety of other functions. Of note, as I had mentioned, the seating that we were proposing would be able to be moved in and out as opposed to traditional auditorium style seating that's permanently affixed. This would allow us to use this space for a multitude of different reasons based on the event. For example, if we had to have an art show, we could pull the bleachers in or pull the seating in and create a larger space. This is a picture of the sample of the style of chair that we could be utilized. If you're familiar with the Wood Theater in Glens Falls, it's a very similar style of structure. Um, there's lots of different options for the chairs. Again, these aren't exactly what they would look like in terms of material or color, but give us an idea of what the seating in that space could look like. And again, these would be movable to allow more functionality of that space. This is a rendering of an exterior view and shows what the new roof may look like when approaching and entering the building. I think it's important to note that the way we're designing this is that we're not going above the current height of the roof. That the middle school, high school roof is still going to be the highest point in the building, so we're not going any higher to obstruct any views. The next slide is a side view of that same space. Again, it's an exterior rendering as you approach the building what that new auditorium multi-purpose room would look like from the exterior of the building. The formal timeline for this project began last month when the Board of Education adopted a resolution that calls for a public vote in May. If approved in May, we would continue to work with our architects on developing the formal design to submit to the State Education Department for review and approval, which should be done sometime in March or April of 2023. Construction then would begin at the end of June, beginning of July of that same year. The established time frame for this project was determined by working backwards based on the expiration of debt and factoring the time requirements for the review of the State Education Department and their approval. It is important to note, though, that these plans are still conceptual. However, I am really excited, as I said at the beginning, about this opportunity and the fact that this project would have a positive impact on every student in the district. All students eat in the cafeteria, all students take art and music at some point in their career, and all students have to participate in physical education. A lot of times with capital projects, they focus on a singular area. We're focusing on athletic fields or the gym or just the auditorium. This plan and one of its benefits is it's, it should have a positive impact on every single student in the community. So I know I presented a lot of information in a very short period of time, 
And so I would welcome any questions that anybody in our virtual audience or in our audience here has. I have Greg Fokiu and Scott Wolf from CSR Gym Associates, who are our construction managers and architects, and Jason Schwartz from EPD Incorporated, who is joining us as well, who is our financial advisors. This is included in the regular budget vote. This is all. So, so the vote. vote. Nope, there will be actually the four votes on budget day. So there will be the vote for the budget. Okay. There will be a vehicle purchase proposition. Okay. The board of education election, and then this will be a separate vote. Oh, but it's okay. all done. We're doing it. All in one we day. tried to coordinate it so it's all done in one day, as opposed okay. to asking people to come out multiple times to vote. You don't think it's going to be any higher with the way inflation is these days? So, an excellent question. So, Greg, you want to? Um, <clears throat> uh, it, it is a bit of a of a you know a, a guess, guess, right? Um, right. Uh, but we do build into the financing uh, escalation costs, and there are some contingencies. We have design and construction contingencies built into the estimate. So, we we're right now carrying a pretty high escalation to address. Pricing increases potentially from now to, to bid day. We're hopeful that prices come down too. Yeah. Which might allow us to do even more. Yeah. Hopeful, not optimistic. Yeah. How how would the 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 sliding part of the auditorium how, that's gonna be maintained, right? How how's that Gonna work. So that would be that would be like an audience system, like like probably very similar to how we have the curtain in the gym. Okay. So there'd be a key. And most likely there would be a safety key switch that authorized users would have to have, and then they would turn that with a button, and it would push those bleachers in or out based on need. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the floor is flat, and then the bleachers they're they're just like a gymnasium type bleacher, but they're deep enough so they have a seat on them. So they would come out, okay. and then it would then it would kind of stack up so you could go up to get higher seating. Okay. And then once it's pushed back in, your floor is flat. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So my taxes won't go up then, will they? Well, <laughs> it's, it's so hard to say. Like well, like I said, like if everything stays the same, there will be a minimal increase. Be, like there is every year. Right. There will right. be a minimal increase. But it's hard to project what happens, you know, in three years from now. You know, if if there's new construction right. that comes in that offsets that, and as the board of education and myself, we work to try and reduce spending in other areas. So if we're able to reduce spending in other areas to counteract that, ideally, our, our goal is to try and make what they call it tax neutral, so it does not have any impact. Okay. Yeah. The way we're projecting, all things being equal, it would have a minor. Any other questions? It's a great question, Greg. Anybody online have any questions? And if you don't have any questions now, you know, please feel free to reach out to me at any time. I'd be more than happy to discuss any other elements of this project with you. Greg or Scott, is there anything that I neglected to mention in the presentation that you wanted to touch on from the design phase? No, I don't think so. Jason, was there anything financially that I missed? No. But then you did a good job of covering it all. If nobody has any questions, I'll, I'll stay on for a bit um, and answer any questions that you have. Otherwise, I appreciate you taking the time to join us. Like I said, there will be um, a newsletter that comes out hopefully at the end of next week or the following week that goes over additional information. Um, and we'll keep information updated on our web page and social media accounts too as we move forward. Yeah. Andy, does the uh, district go um, with the lowest bidder for the project, or um, 
or do you guys look at qualifications to who uh, who can give you the best product for for us here?